15 years. Can you believe it? I've been on YouTube for 15 years. God, it's basically half my life. I mean, so much has changed since I started this channel. I mean, I've been reviewing totally different products. Nah, I'm kidding. We got the same old, same old here today. Oh, but yeah, seriously, I still can't believe it. 15 years. Um, I mean, there's some things that are different since the beginning. I, I don't have my website anymore. I shut that off years ago, but I got a Discord server where people hang out. I got a Twitch where I stream every Tuesday, which you should go follow if you're not following it. I'm still not monetized by YouTube for reasons that Google has yet to explain to me because they literally claim some proprietary information they don't want to divulge, blah, blah, blah. Something about invalid click activity. Who knows? So also, if you want to check out the Patreon down below, it's really cool. All right, enough with the self-shilling. Let's get to the crud. And yeah, this thing is crud. <laughs> this is the mini game player. Um, I actually saw Elliot on the Retro Studio do a video on this months ago. And I also planned on doing a video about this months ago. Um, yeah, a lot of problems happened. And you'll see why. You'll see why the video was delayed so much. So yes, we have markings. It's the mini game player. 500 games. That's so cool. Supports five languages. Oh, thank God it's got Portuguese. Digital game console, 2.4 inch wide LCD. The console is slim. Port... Prodable... And trendy, with the ultra-thin body and small size, you could easily put it in your pants pocket. What if I'm wearing shorts? Take out the game machine at any time to pass the time, without any restriction. Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, local jurisdictions might apply. Red, blue, and green. You can see I have the green one. Although it's not really... It's like a very pastel green, kind of washed out. Oh well, box is pretty beat up. I guarantee you it arrived to me like that. Because the thing came all the way from China in a very weak envelope. Cost me only 12 bucks on eBay. So let's see, we don't... A very thin sheet of toilet paper. Yeah, that, that's your instructions right there. You're not going to get instructions for all 500 games. That is for darn sure. Uh, do not disassemble. Try to repair the handheld game console. Ha! We'll talk about that now, won't we? Do not, do not drop... Yeah. Not much to say about it, really. Does it mention the battery charger? Because it does have a battery, uh, rechargeable battery built in. Uh, no. Oh, it does mention the LED battery indicators right there, which it is. It lights up when you're charging it, goes off when it's done charging. And speaking of charging, they do at least include the micro USB cable, although it is, in, it is comically thin and also comically short. I mean, I'm not even going to bother to untwist tie that, because I'm pretty sure once I do, it'll still be the same length, so who cares? Yeah, let's go ahead and look at the device here. Uh, ooh, we get to savor the peelies. Ready? Let's savor the peelies together, everybody. Oh, those are some pretty quiet peelies. Oh, well, at least that reveals a nice, uh, glossy surface. Ooh, uh, those fingerprints might be my own, actually. Uh, let's see. Yep, there's a fingerprint. Oh, yeah, we already got our fingerprints there. If you want to steal my biometrics, there you go. So, yeah, it is very thin, and it is very... It is light, but it doesn't feel cheap, honestly. The plastic feels... Uh, what's the word we'll look for today? Competent. The plastic feels competent. The buttons, they do feel solid, but they almost have too much of a click. Like, almost you have to really exert some force. Like, yeah, I really want to press that Y button. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see, start, volume, reset. And the switch is thankfully recessed in more than the D-pad is, so that shouldn't go off in your pocket. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn it on. You notice the problem here. <laughs> uh, some things never change on my channel. You see, when you buy cheap electronics, you're really taking a gamble when it comes to quality assurance. And this is no exception. When I first got it, it would bring up the language selection screen. But the moment I pressed anything on the D-pad, it would freeze. No matter what. Um, I don't remember if the buttons made it freeze, but the D-pad. D-pad up. Yeah, that made it freeze. Just pressing it would make weird lines appear across the screen. It was totally, totally frozen. Uh, you'd have to turn it off, turn it back on, and, you know, try it again. So I tried taking it apart. I figured maybe there was a broken trace on the board, or maybe the, the chip inside maybe wasn't soldered down all the way, or there's a loose connection. 
So I tried reseeding the solder and now it just boots up to a white screen. So it's a rechargeable flashlight that plays the look of a Game Boy. It's not even that bright. If you wanted to change the brightness, you can't because you can't get into the settings anyway. Although I don't think there were any brightness settings in the menu. Can't say I ever got that far though. So yeah, that's about it for today's review. I lied, I bought another one. So, remember how I said I planned on doing this video a long time ago? Well, I messaged the eBay seller and I was like, hey, this thing ain't working. He wanted pictures, I sent him pictures of it not working. He's like, alright, turn it off, turn it back. I'm like, I did that, it didn't work. So he said, alright, you can keep it and we'll send you another one. And the other one never came. <laughs> I waited maybe about a month to get this one initially. And when I finally got it, of course, it was broken and... I waited two months after I told him this was broken, and I still had no replacement. I eventually filed a complaint with eBay. They gave me a full refund. I messaged the seller multiple times, and he kept insisting me, we sent you a replacement. I'm like, can you give me the tracking number? He's like, I can't. Our system only allows one tracking number per order, but rest assured it's in the mail. Yeah, after two months of waiting, COVID or not, I'm about done with you. So I found another seller on eBay that was selling in the U.S., and I got it in three days for the same price. Got different markings though, so I feel special about that. Uh, we still, yeah, we still got Portuguese. Um, hmm. Looks like whoever was checking it off with a regular pen got upgraded to a Sharpie marker. So kudos! It looks like he got some sort of promotion. Well, I think that's enough talking about the backstory of this thing, huh? And eh, manual's the same. Cable still. Oh, good. Now I've got two of them. They can live together and start a family. So here is the working one. As you'll see, it is in fact working. <laughs> so yeah, this one has not given me any issues yet. Uh, it does appear that the two of them are in fact the exact same console, down to the color and everything. No markings on the back on either one. Yeah, bye broken one. Hello working one. We would like English, please, for then we can actually read it. Uh, Contra 24 and 1. Wow, you got all... Tw I forgot this menu. You guys remember um, all the classic Contra games, right? You, you guys remember Contra 3F? I remember Contra 3F. Oh, no. No, the real classic is Contra S30. That's the one we got to play. Uh, start... A button? Start button? There we go, it was the start button it wanted. Uh, this one seems to have some sort of edited uh, copyright information there. That's interesting. Alright, start. Good luck playing two players on this. This would be physically impossible. Oh, we get 30 lives right off the bat. Oh, we might have to turn down the sound of it. Jesus, that's loud. Okay, so there's three sound settings. There's none. A little bit. Moderate. And Jesus Christ. Wait, listen to the speaker. It's blown out. <laughs> Fantastic. So this one still has a blown out speaker, but, yeah, well, at least it boots. Okay, so this is Contra 1, but you've got... The spread shot from the start, and you have the Konami code already activated. I mean, that's fair enough. We can get the rapid fire. Now we got rapid fire spread shots. There we go. Oh, what's there to say? That's Contra. Let's go ahead and reset that, shall we? Uh, let's pick Portuguese this time. Let's have some fun. Uh, Super Mario Bros. 3. Is Super Mario Bros. 3 going to be in Portuguese? Oh. My bad, this isn't Super Mario Bros. 3. This is that classic game, uh, 3. You guys remember 3? It's a good game. Ooh. Listen to that sound emulation. Y y y ah. No, that's... That is horribly off-key. Ah, this is the Japanese round. I can tell by the fade into the level. Oh, the off-key music is worse. Here, wait, wait, wait. Uh, 
Ugh. I mean, come on. With all the different emulators out there, you really... You really went with... Ugh, the sound is so wrong. And look at the screen tearing! Look at that screen tearing. That's not just an emulation issue. That, that makes this handheld look like they purposely went out of their way to see how much they can make this thing tear the screen diagonally when moving fast. Because, boy, boy they, they succeed. Ugh. Like, sure, it doesn't make a game unplayable, but, man, does it play games on your eyes. It's like... It's like a car crash. You can't look away from it. You can't help but want to look. And the more you look, the more intrigued you get. Oh, that's... Ah, uh, that is so off-key. What else we got on here? Uh... Spanish? Give me Spanish this time. Ah, uh, this time the... Oh, Double Dragon. Yes. Uh, let's try 90 Tank. It's my fault for putting it in Spanish, but... Oh, it's the game Tank. Okay. Uh, reset. Well, do we truly have 500 games on here? That would be... I'm gonna save chess for last, huh? Let's see. Present... Who presents? You took their copyright name off the... Yes. Oh! Listen to the crunch of the speaker when I put it on full volume. Rest in peace, headphone users. I apologize. Alright, so... Seems a competent chess game, sure. Uh, excuse me. This ain't chess. This is Othello. Or reversey, as uh, Steve Ballmer would say. This ain't chess at all. I want my money back. Uh, let's see. Let's let's really scroll through. The oh, turtles! Please tell me this is uh, the first TMNT game. There's TouchGamePlayer.com again. I've seen that name before on very old electronic. Ta oh, this is TMNT two. Uh, sure, we'll pick that one. Nah. Although I. That still sounds off-key. Ah, well. I'm sure the game technically works. It's just got a lot of screen tearing. I turned off the sound. So we can scroll through in peace. Ooh, Super Bear Brothers. I remember that one. Oh, no, no, no. No bears. Just regular Mario. Uh, start. Okay. I don't see no bears. I see Mario. Where are the bears? Definitely not bears, just off-key music Mario. That is a clicky D-pad. But you know what? It's really not the worst. Yeah, it's way more clicky than it needs to be. But it's tolerable. The music and the screen tearing, however, are not tolerable. Have I said that enough? No, so I'm going to keep repeating it. I blame playing through the viewfinder. What else we got? Come on, let's, let's, let's really dig deep into this list. Let's... Oh, God, I didn't want to make it that loud. Oh, as much as I'd like to try, uh, try Magic Egg. No, I, I want to dig deep into this list. Oh, thank God, we could use the left arrow. Let's literally go in the middle. Let's see what the 250th game is. I will say this, though. I'm not really seeing any repeats. Unless I'm missing them. All right. Uh, sorry, I was just... Pack Packland. <sighs> nope, nope, we gotta try Crisis. We said we were gonna try the 250th game. Uh, this looks like something out of a Zone 40. This very well may be something out of a Zone 40. What the... What is these... What are these graphics? Wow, that is straight up donkey poop. Uh, I really don't know what I was looking at. 
Uh, ooh, egg contest. All right, let's try egg contest. Yeah, this, this really looks like they took some of those Zone 40, Zone 60 type games and kind of slammed those in here as well as actual NES games. Oh, uh, is this like you got to catch them? Yeah, you just got to catch them before they... Look at that muscular chicken! That is a chicken you don't want to mess with. Wow. Is there any penalty for letting the eggs drop? I think I was letting them drop, and it wasn't... Yeah, I don't really see any penalty of letting them drop, even like those hearts, they don't go down. Oh, something's chasing me. Oh, if they hatch, they can attack you. And now I'm locked in place. Oh, no, okay. Well, that is the minigame player. Very interesting little device. Hmm. This is my 15th video anniversary after all. I do have a broken one of these. And I do have the tools to open it. Yeah, let's open it live on video. Uh, but you know what? Before we open it, we do have to give a thank you to today's video sponsor. Because we do have a video sponsor. Whoa! Oh my gosh, I know, right? No, we have a video sponsor, and they are Skillshare. So, Skillshare, do this thing where you do the video in the thing. There you go. You may have heard about them before, but now I get the honor of telling you about them. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. For me personally, I really like the film and video section they have. Specifically, they have a lot of classes about Adobe Premiere, and I've been using Adobe Premiere for years. But I really only know the basics. Most of it is self-taught, playing around experimentation. But they have videos on how to get better with using titles, using video transitions, and it's really, really cool stuff. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Also, the first thousand people to use the link in my description, they get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So you literally have nothing to lose. Go check them out. Okay, so now let's see what makes this thing tick. This video not sponsored by iFixit, although I love their tools. Uh, what was the plan of attack? How did I get this open last time? Wait, let me just make sure. Is this the one that doesn't work? Yes. Not that I'm saying... Uh, I want to put hours of gameplay into the one that does work, but I think I remember plastic catches. Oh, yeah, I see them. There are plastic catches on the inside of the case. Yep. You just got to... See, if I didn't care about scratching this, I would be using a plastic sponger. However, the fact that I'm using a metal screwdriver should tell you about how much I care. Also, it's broken, so it's not really that big of a deal. Okay, that just, that just comes off. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's just, uh, that's just adhesive. A lot of adhesive. With ga oh, so there's not even any screen there, like where it says games power, that's just more bezel. Okay, oh, there's a little battery. Oh, he's kind of cute. How many milliamps? 400 milliamps, that are, that'll power your iPhone 12 for about five seconds. So there's the buttons. And look at the buttons. They're not even separate. They're all just one piece. Uh, let's dive. Let's dive further. Come on, you. There we go. It's probably easier to take apart since I've taken this apart once before. I did genuinely try to fix it. I really, really did. But in the end, ended up having to order another one. The seller was like, oh, I, I promise I sent you another one. No, you didn't. Well, that case is exciting. That's more exciting. So, um, this here was where I tried to re-solder. I figured that since pressing up on the D-pad was making it crash, I figured maybe one of the traces up here or one of these pins wasn't making full enough contact with the board or it was kind of hanging up in the air, it was loose. I don't know, but I tried... Um, yeah, I tried rerunning the solder. I can't... It looks like that 
these pins right here might actually be accidentally bridged. So that might be why it's not booting up anymore, but whatever. I've got a working one now, so let's see. Is there anything of value inside of this thing? Well, oh, we could take the PCB out. There's two, yes, two Phillips screws. This one should do the trick. Let's get it fully out. If you're going to do it, do it right. You know, might as well go all the way. Make sure it's fully apart. Let's see. Is there any adhesive holding you in? Or Oh, no, we got to take the screen ribbon cable out because that's kind of holding it back. Come on. There you go. Uh, there's a speaker. Speaker, you want to you wanna come out of there? It's okay. There you go. Oh, that is magnetic. Come on. Come on out of there. There we go. So there it is. Minus the screen, that's everything there is to it. Looks like I tried to maybe chip away at the epoxy there and see if I could find the secrets within. I always find it funny when Chinese bootleggers try to epoxy their chips. Like, what secrets are you hiding? You stolen everybody else's stuff. Now you want to hide secrets? I don't know. I just find that interesting. And yeah, plus, if this is the heart of it, really, then what's under here? I, I guess it's really mostly just they don't want other manufacturers being able to quickly clone this and sell it as their own. For those dying to know, this is apparently a JKT B10A4. I thought it was a U, but it's a zero. It's just kind of coming off by the trace there. Well, you can get a 400 milliamp battery out of it. So overall, 10 out of 10, great deal, would recommend. Go on eBay and buy yourself 10 of these immediately. Well then, <laughs> happy 15 years, everybody. Literally half my life looking at this stuff. And it's kind of amazing to see that these kinds of products really haven't changed much. Uh, time keeps ticking. See you in another 15 years. Thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to the people listed here. These are the Patreon supporters that allow me to keep doing what I do on YouTube. Wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. There's a Discord server in the description if you want to join there. And on Twitch, I stream every week on Tuesday. Come hang out with us.